Hey everybody, uh, my name is Fraser and I would love to chat with you today about uh, football and specifically um, why I think football is a unique sport that uh, can give players, if they're in the right cultural framework, like, the, like a, a good team environment, uh, can give players uh, some unique skill sets that I think translate really well, obviously in the sport itself, but outside of the sport as well in real life. I think football, um, if done right, can give uh, players a sort of a, almost like a superhero skill set in regards to being resilient and being effective uh, outside of just the actual sport field itself. Um, so I'd love to just chat with you about that. I don't think it's well, um, well, not documented, but well uh, engaged with in, in regards to like the, the coaching community. I think it's, you know, we, we, uh, when coaches get together, it's X's and O's and, and winning games and stuff. But I think the real juice is actually in the sort of um, mindset players come out with. So they come in uh, in one capacity and then after a few years, they come out in a looking completely different in how they view reality and how they accept challenges, things like that. Um, so the three things we'll be chatting about today uh, is uh, the perception of outcomes, how uh, football frames um, outcomes differently than I think other sports uh, and specifically uh, different than just the average how, a football player who's who's uh, been in the game a long time and been in a good environment uh, will often view, at least in my experience, uh, reality uh, and outcomes from a unique angle. Um, the second thing is sort of a mindset, a sort of a resiliency mindset, uh, which regard with regard to um, sort of reframing, reframing things to be opportunities, uh, emotional control of uh, of oneself in, in the heat of the moment in regards to positive or negative emotions, um, and then sort of an irrational confidence that most good football players, if not all, have, and how that translates in the real world outside of the sport. And then lastly. Um, the sort of radical honesty component of football uh, in regards to coach-player interactions and player-to-player -player interactions. Uh, and I think how that is useful, not even just in the sport, but also in like the working world or just uh, in just interpersonal relationships, regardless of the context. So I'd love to chat with you about that stuff. Just for context, uh, I'm a football nut. I have played football since I was 12, 13. Uh, I played community ball. I played on two different community teams at the same time. I was all in. Uh, I was like the skinniest kid on the team always uh, <laughs> to an extent. Uh, and then drank a lot of milk and got a little bit bigger, um, but it was still skinny. Uh, luckily, was just good enough in high school to uh, get a scholarship to play in university. Uh, tried my best there, had success. Um, and then from that position, continued to coach after my sort of varsity career was done. I've coached, uh, again, 12, 13 year old kids in a community football context coached high school ball uh, in different, many different programs. Um, and I've also dabbled in sort of like the sort of varsity stuff as well uh, in the university context. Uh, and then for context too, uh, I, because of my work, I sort of travel all over the place. And so I've coached in many different programs with many different coaches. Uh, and I have noticed that there are some uh, there's similarities uh, between programs, uh, whether they're good or bad or ugly. There's some insights I think that the players get uh, through the coaching staff and through the culture of football uh, that generates positive outcomes for them way down the line, not just in the football realm. So moving on from that, the first thing uh, that I really like is the sort of perception of outcomes and how uh, players are very well aware that they do not control outcomes. The only thing they can control is process. And if you go to any sort of uh, football program where the, uh, the, the program is healthy, you will always hear something along the lines of like, you know, you just got to focus on process. It's process, process, process. So if you're a quarterback, it doesn't matter if you throw an interception, it's like next rep, right? We're clearing the slate, next rep. Uh, if you're uh, a defensive back and you get a touchdown scored on you, it's like, that's going to happen no matter what. We're clearing the slate, next rep. So there's, um, I think football is one of those kind of sports where um, you are you know you're going to lose and you know it's going to feel really bad uh, and you don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, I remember one time, for example, uh, I was uh, starting my first game in university. Uh, it was my second year. Finally got a chance to start, feeling pretty cocky. And of course, the guy, I was a defensive back. And so the guy I lined up with, the receiver who was against me, happened to be the best player in the league uh, and played eight or nine years professionally after that. Um, and I remember just going up and being like, you know, I'm going to try my best here, but I, you know, like I, I have this perception of, of, of being a dominant player or whatnot or being confident. Uh, but that guy just ran right past me first play. He just wanted to sort of speed test me a bit. He just sort of blew by me. And I thought, man, like this is going to be 
uh, a real a real struggle. And I remember I went off to the sideline and I went to my uh, position coach and I was like, coach, like, you know, like this is gonna suck. And he's like, yeah, probably will. And it did. Uh, I think that guy uh, put me on the highlight reel a few times, um, which was okay. So I guess one of the, the first context is with football i think you get in other sports as well is that as an individual on a team like you can really uh look badly really quick um and that's sort of a unique uh sort of component where uh the the football coaching um around you as a player will often say you know you don't control the outcome in any context which i think is sort of from a philosophical point of view uh a, a, a good insight um so again it's like can you uh clear the slate can you can you move from one bad event to another uh, quickly? And viewing and and the key insight in that to do that um, is to not to know you have no control over outcome, and really the only thing you can control is the input um, and your agency over how you view reality and view those events. So that sort of leads into the sort of the mindset uh, component. So a uh, big thing in football is reframing, um, and you'll see this often, at least in my experience. Uh, usually from coaches, but also from players, where if a situation is bad, good, or ugly, um, it's up for the team to sort of reframe the context in a way that has utility for you know winning the game or winning the championship or, or recovering. So a good example of that would be uh, we, is my second or third year of university. Uh, we're playing against a team uh, that we were winning, or sorry, losing uh, rather, uh, by about 20 points at halftime. And so everyone's body language is down. We're all in the locker room, uh, you know, sort of like uh, just like dead silence. Everyone's miserable because we're, you know, getting our butts kicked. And uh, the coach comes in and uh, he says, hey guys, listen up. And everyone sort of looks up and he says, what an opportunity. We're down 20 nothing. And everyone sort of like looked at him like he was crazy. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I remember he said something along the lines of like, what an opportunity to come back. Like, we're going to, you know, like, we're going to go back out there and this is going to be like fantastic. Like, this is great. What, like, just like nothing was wrong at all. Um, and that's an interesting way to view reality. And I think this translates, uh, for me anyways, because um, at, at that moment I just thought, okay, like, that's a good way, you know, sweet, let's, let's move next step, right? Like, I'm in the moment. Uh, but in retrospect, when I look back at sort of moments like that, um, I realize that that to me is sort of like a quasi superpower. Um, often when I am uh, in my work life capacity, uh, events will happen that are negative, And my response usually immediately is good, sweet, let's, let's bring it on. Um, and that is a unique mindset that I, that many of my coworkers in different realms don't share. So I worked in law enforcement for a period of time. Um, and often, you know, uh, when bad things were happening, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, people were calling you mean names or, you know, saying they're going to kill you or kill your family or something along those lines. Um, often, uh, uh, the, the, my coworkers would would view that as a really negative experience and they'd hold that anger for hours and you know like they'd be you know quite upset where for me i was like oh like let's reframe this just and i just cycle through different ways of perceiving that stimulus and i go oh like this is an opportunity to practice compassion oh like you know here's an opportunity to practice resiliency like i i just turned it into a challenge something i could uh something that was useful for me and i i literally do that on a daily basis with all sorts of things you know <laughs> like i uh you know, I don't know, uh, if I'm at the grocery store and um, like my, my bags drop and like all my groceries are on the floor, I'm like, wow, it's an opportunity to, you know, uh, practice resiliency under pressure because I'm embarrassed. Like, let's embrace it or whatever the case. That's a stupid example, but you sort of get my drift. Uh, you know, you could even be like an astronaut on the space station and be like, you know, um, you know, we've got a leak. Sweet. What a chance to practice my protocols. Like this is what I've been training for versus let's panic. Right. Uh, so that's a specific football thing. I don't get that a lot in other sports. And I think the reason why is because football is very emotion driven. You'll see 12, 13 year old kids. Uh, you can always tell who's winning. You don't need to look at the score because the team that has the most kids sitting on the bench with their, you know, sort of shoulders down, you, you just know that that team is psychologically being beaten. And I think that applies to other sports too, but football, just based on its sort of the mechanics of the game, uh, the emotions really swing from one play to the next, especially on big plays. Um, and it's, can you reframe that to be positive? The, or or in, in a, 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 can you reframe it to have utility for you? Um, so that's a unique football thing. The second one is emotional control. Uh, this sort of bleeds into the uh, not controlling outcomes and, and uh, the reframing metric. Uh, but the emotional control is um, often embedded in the sport. So if you're a quarterback and you throw an interception, you know, 
the band for the other team is playing, your girlfriend is leaving you, uh, you know, like it's all, you know, your scholarship's getting written off, like, you know, the scouts there are just like, they're done with you, it's all over, right? Um, and you'll see teams that have bad coaching or, or, or have a bad culture, you'll see that player like implode like a dying star, you know? Um, or on the opposite end of my spectrum, like, you know, you're a defensive back, uh, quarterbacks that are good complete more passes than they don't, right? It's 60% completion rate. So you're more likely to get uh, a negative outcome than you are a positive one to an extent, right? So getting burnt or getting destroyed in, in the context of the game is, is actually part of the, part of the game. Um, and most people, uh, I, I don't think that's true in other sports. I think it's a bit more of a neutral kind of in, environment. Uh, football is very cute in that sense. So it's uh, so if I'm coaching kids, I'll often be like, hey, like you're a defensive back or you're a quarterback, a bad thing will occur, whatever that means to you. I'll give you 15 seconds to feel really sad about that. After that 15 seconds, I need you back to, to um, that sort of like really focused, uh, emotional kind of uh, a max um, capacity uh, framework that we've we've created from beforehand. So a kid will throw an interception. I'll be like, I'll give you 15 seconds to be sad about it. Like that's it. That's all I that's all I give you permission to. Do. And you'll actually see that kids will ingest that and leverage that. And I leverage that kind of framework all the time. You know, if some a boss yells at me or if I really screw screw something up at work, um, often I will be sad. And I'll literally think back to like, oh, I'm in a football context. What would I do? And I just go, oh, perfect. I'm, my emotions are sad, I'm back to action, I'm reframing the event to be positive, and I'm focusing on not outcomes because I don't control those anyways, but I'm focusing on process. Let's go fix this problem. And I think that's, uh, again, football, you can get that from other sports, I'm sure, you know, but uh, football specifically grinds that into, into kids. This also applies to positive emotions. Uh, when kids are, uh, have, a, have, a good, have a good outcome, it's the same thing, right? Quarterback throws a uh, a ball, it's a touchdown, you know, all of a sudden your girlfriend comes back, your band is playing, the scholarships are getting written like you're the man, right? You're gonna be on local TV or some something like that. <laughs> you're jazzed up. I'll give you like, as a coach, I'll be like, you get 30 seconds, because it's a positive event, to be happy. Like, do a dance, roll on the floor, like, whatever you want to do. But then after that 30 seconds, we're clearing the slate, it's the next play. Because we're focused on process, man. That outcome is sort of like out of your control. When that ball leaves your hand, like, you know, yeah, it's a good outcome, congratulations, next, next rep. Um, and I, again, apply that in my life all the time. Something good happens at work, yeah, I'll celebrate for a second, but then I'm psh, next, I'm going to the next rep, whatever that might be, regardless of the work context. So that's a good insight to take away. Um, the last one would be sort of, and you know, this is a football specific kind of, uh, attitude and it, it, it is definitely comes across as arrogant, but I don't think it actually is. So, uh, there, it's, it's sort of like an irrational optimism or an irrational confidence. And I'll, I'll explain it by way of sort of story, I suppose. So, um, in high school, I was decent enough to get, um, invited to like a star bowl or like a, uh, um, like a senior bowl thing where the best players in the region sort of got together uh, just for like a two, three day camp. And then universities would scout you and, and, and you'd try to do your best, whatever. And so in my position grouping, there was maybe 15 of us, or maybe not that many, maybe about 10. And we were all sitting around this first day camp. Everyone's nervous. Uh, no one's ever been to, uh, to uh, away from home. So there's, you know, like, you know, kids are nervous. Uh, and it's a big, it's a big deal for a lot of kids because, you know, if you perform, you might get a scholarship, you might go to, like, you know, that next level. So it's, it's, it's a high pressure environment and everyone's competing with each other. Uh, anyway, so this coach walks up and he is uh, playing the NFL for like many years and he sort of walks up with a swagger kind of thing. Uh, and he says like, who's the best player? And we all play the same position. And he goes, Who, who's the best player in this group? Raise your hand. And of course, no one does it because we're all like, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know who that guy is. Like, you know, who knows, right? Uh, and he said, none of you guys are going to make it. Like, you're, you're, you're done before you even started. And we all sort of like looked at him like he's crazy. And he's like, if I was on an NFL team right now and I asked that question, who's the best player in the group, uh, every hand would go up. And that is sort of like an analogy of like that sort of irrational optimism. Um, and at the time, he didn't really explain it more than that. So we all just sort of gingerly put our hands up, we're the best, and then <laughs> off we go or whatever to go on the field. Uh, but uh, I think if you break that down a bit, it's actually, a, again, sort of a quasi superpower. So um, essentially, all the best players I've ever played with um, will always think they're the best in every sort of aspect of the game, even if they know they're not. So it is a tool uh, to best leverage sort of anxiety or fear or leverage your in, uh, talents in a, in a situation. So um, 
it, it of course it is literally false, let's say, but has utility. So uh, I often do this at my own work now. I, I work in sort of a government sort of civil servant kind of uh, situation, but I deal with a lot of high up executive dudes uh, who have like 20, 30 years of experience on me. Uh, so I'm always the junior guy in, in, in the context I'm going into. And some of my meetings or some of my tasks are, are high pressure and political. So when I walk in the door, often it's my first rep ever of presenting that like information that I've never seen before. Like it's a high stress for me anyways, high stress environment I'm presenting to people, you know, with gray hair and I'm, I'm nervous, I'm sweating. Uh, and as I'm walking towards the door, I'm often like, man, I'm about to get like my butt handed to me because it's usually sort of a combative environment, uh, which I sort of enjoy, but it's freaky. But as I walk in the door, I literally will think of a football context. of like, what would I do if I was walking on that field? I flick the switch and I go, I'm, I'm the best. It's irrational, but I'm just like, I'm the man. I am so good at this. I am better than everyone in this room and I'm going to kill it regardless of the task. It could be something I'm terrible at, like we're all going to be painting. I'm still going to think I'm the best in, in order to get over my anxiety uh, or get over or to flip my anxiety into uh, excitement, right? It's a reframing uh, through, and I use it as a tool almost on a daily basis. Um, now, of course, um, if it's, it's sort of like the golden mean, uh, sort of Aristotle kind of, you know, you got to find your eudaimonia kind of component of that where it's, you don't want to be too hot and too cold. It's a tool. So of course, um, people with that mindset can go into like pure arrogance and that's too far. You don't actually want to cognitively believe that as you're just walking down the street, generically speaking. Um, but you also want to have that humility, but I, but, to, but often I will leverage that. And a perfect example was the example I gave before, uh, going against that really good receiver who, you know, played professional for a long time. Um, when I went back out there, like my coach sort of, you know, inspired me to have that mindset. So when I went back out there, I was like, let's compete. Sweet. This guy's going to roast me. Like who cares? I'm all in, I'm squaring up to the challenge. Uh, and I find most people generically speaking, especially the people I work with now, I'm sort of in a management role, do not always square up to what's in the way. Uh, so if there's some, if there's anxiety in their life or if there's something like a, like a task that's scary, a lot of people will sort of shy away from that where I feel like the, in the football realm, that's like, it's the opposite of that. You've got to like run full speed at whatever is, is, uh, is traumatizing to you, right? So uh, the best player in the team, like I'm going full at it, I'm competing. The outcome is out of my control. I'm just grinding through it. So you see how these things all sort of line up together to sort of for, form a sort of philosophy of life on how to act. Um, and I, I will leverage that all the time. So if I'm at work and something bad comes down the pike or a, an opportunity, a growth opportunity comes around the corner, um, I, I can feel everyone else going, oh, I don't want to do that. That's scary. Oh, there's a, um, an anxiety in the room. And I go, oh, that's exactly what I got to do. And I will literally like, <laughs> I won't physically turn into it, but like I'm, I'm square up to it. I'm like broad chest and I'm going right at it. And that has given me many opportunities that other people haven't had. And I've found success in my sort of vertical of work uh, by just presenting, uh, just by just doing that. And I think that's sort of unique to a football skill set. Most football guys will be like that. Who's the best guy? I want to go against that dude. Well, it's like, okay, like who, uh, what, what's the ultimate challenge for me as a player? I'm, I'm all in. How hard can I train maximally, right? So there's, um, it's an irrational mindset, but it's a tool that you can use to lever um, positive results, which I think is super cool. So the third component is sort of a radical honesty. Um, again, not uh, unique to any other sport necessarily, but I think the way football is sort of framed and the way, so especially like the higher level, uh, the way uh, sort of practices and film studies and stuff is, is organized, I've noticed that uh, it sort of creates an environment of um, uh, extreme responsibility and, and a radical kind of honesty. So, uh, for example, uh, when I was playing at university and even when I'm coaching now with, with players, uh, in a sort of, in my different role, um, we will watch a practice, we will watch a game. Uh, it's filmed from every angle. You'll go to a film study session either before the next practice or after the game or whatever the case, and you'll review um, how you played, uh, and, and you'll score yourself essentially. And it's, it's brutally honest, uh, to say the least. And there's a, you know, there's a the good way to do this and there's a, you know, a toxic way to do this, let's say. Uh, but often 
um, the critiques are like pretty intense. So I remember uh, when I was in university, one time my uh, coach said to me, he's like, Fraser, uh, watching you play football makes me physically ill. <laughs> and to be fair, like it wasn't that bad of a play, but you know, that's sort of how he felt. And he just told me, which is okay. Uh, so there's, there's a, the, the, the feedback you get from the coaching staff to the players is usually pretty raw. Um, and at the time, I remember feeling like pretty hurt about that. Cause again, I didn't have these philosophical, philosophical insights uh, to sort of uh, uh, so, so hard tuned, but over time, like you get very resilient and very tough to uh, uh, criticism. Again, this relates back to like the sort of law enforcement stuff. I have a lot of uh, ple- um, football guys go into law enforcement. It seems like a natural transition. Uh, it's either that or firefighting or, you know, I don't know, something else. But, uh, but uh, Often I will talk to my football buddies who I played university with who are, let's say, police officers or in the law enforcement field, generally speaking. And when we chat together, they will often say, yeah, I notice that, you know, when uh, uh, negative things are thrown around, I recover really quickly. My other coworkers do not. And part of that, I think, is because uh, the meanest things that have ever been said to me uh, have not been uh, people who uh, are, are, are who I'm arresting or, or you know t- processing for for offenses and stuff like that. It's actually been like my football coaches in film session, like you know people were going to uh, <laughs> counseling pretty much just for that almost, uh, not even just playing the game. The film sessions were were scary. Uh, and, but in in retrospect, looking back at that, of course, you know there's a there's a maybe there's a better way to you know be honest with people. There can be some tact in that. Uh, but I actually sort of crave that kind of feedback now in my current work environment. Again, in the government civil service kind of realm, um, no one will give me feedback that's honest. It's always like laced with sort of like rosy views uh, uh, of my performance. And even in my current role, I, I've yet to receive any. Uh, critique or feedback on anything I've done really in the last sort of calendar year, which is bananas to me because, you know, if you watched one session of, you know, of, uh, if you, if you uh, looked at my work, there's definitely stuff to critique, right? Um, just like there would be for anyone. So I think um, that is a unique football thing uh, that I really like. And, you know, I critique my players and my players critique my coaching as well because we have that kind of two-way street. Um, and, and it is honest. Like, I'm like, you're not doing well in this. Boom, there it is. Uh, and kids, uh, you know, uh, react uh, in a certain way to that. But over time, it's like, wow, like we're actually improving, we're moving the ball forward. So from an operational perspective, like I am totally comfortable in my work life uh, in any scenario being like, hey, I think this is a problem. Like I, I, if there's something I need to say, I'll be tactful when I do it, I'll be diplomatic, uh, but the, the, the message will be out there. Um, and often um, people will comment on me sort of on the back side of meetings, things like that, and be like, Fraser, you know, thanks for bringing that topic up. Like a little bit awkward, glad you did that. Um, again, so I've gotten opportunities to do unique things and I've been able to uh, bring issues forward that have been uh, useful for me and also my teams that I've worked with. Um, so that's sort of a useful, useful thing. Um, there's also sort of the component of like uh, in football, like your teammates will be honest with you in ways that, you know, maybe your parents won't be if they're really nice or your like non-football friends uh, uh, won't be. So I remember I lived in a football house with 11 dudes, uh, super fun place to live. It was uh, like a 1970s mansion kind of style house, like Hugh Hefner kind of style. It had thick shag brown carpet that you get your toes stuck into. Like it was deep, like, you know, like an inch kind of deep shag and then uh like panel wood cheap cheap panel wood hallways you know with mirrors in the top so you could see yourself as you're walking um and we had a lot of fun in that house uh good parties things like that but um it was 11 football dudes and a lot of guys who are you know pretty pretty intense competitors and that's what you want right i like being in those kind of environments uh and i remember one time uh there's a sort of a one week of practices where i was sort of dogging it just wasn't really feeling it don't remember exactly why but uh, I remember we were uh, sitting around uh, eating dinner, watching TV, and one of the guys in the house just turned to me and said essentially something along the lines of like, why are you playing so poorly? Not those more swearing involved. And I said, ah, you know, you know, take a hike, this, that, whatever. Like I sort of defending myself, which was, you know, not the right answer. And uh, he said, well, you should either just like, you know, get better or just quit. Cause like, we don't want people who are like dogging it. And I remember just being like very offended at, at the moment, but then, you know, the football player in me sort of, engage and I thought oh that's actually good advice I am dogging it you know time to like leverage into it because you know I'm the best player let's do it like you know again you're cycling through that process to to have utility and the next practice I was you know back in the mix um running around uh hitting people and stuff and uh you know like that next day same person who critiqued me was like hey you improved I'm impressed like because he was a captain dude and I sort of looked up to him 
uh, and and that was super useful for me. So again, you know, there's a tactful way to do those things. And when you get you know 21 year old dudes uh, who are all uh, you know all about the football life, like you know maybe um, you know there'll be more swearing and and, and less uh, less grace when they're when they're giving that feedback. But I actually crave that now. Like if I write a document and I send it to a friend to critique, like man, I'm not getting I'm not getting real feedback. If, if you know what I'm saying. So I think that's a, a it's a super skill really to be able to give feedback honestly, because you know that's what you want when you're asking for it. But also to take it without taking it to heart, you know, without being offended. Um, that is a unique skill set, and I bring that to the table everywhere. And uh, I'm in a realm where I'm not hanging out with guys like that in the in the the, the shag carpet mansion, and I have found that. Um, I am unique amongst my peers in that context. Um, you know, it, it's one thing to uh, intellectually talk about it, but it's another thing to get, give it and receive it, like in the in the real realm. Um, uh, and, and I think that, that that's made me more resilient and and able to improve. Um, and the last thing in regards to honesty is is the brutal honesty internally. Um, and this applies obviously in football and, and sports, but also in real life. Like you know, if you break up with your girlfriend, or you know, you have a sort of uh, uh, falling out with a friend or, or you know, you're dogging it at work or whatever, often people will blame themselves, blame something. They'll go into the victim realm and they'll, they'll go, oh, well, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, uh, life is tough and there go, I, you know, I'm dogging it at work or whatever the case, or, you know, my girlfriend was the worst or my boyfriend or my spouse was the worst. And, you know, it's, it's their fault, not mine. Uh, but that radical honesty in football, like that accountability piece, like where that, like you, like you eat, you eat every mistake you you make and you take responsibility for it. Um, of course, it's painful at the moment, but I am very able to leverage that now in my real life. So I probably have once a year an insight that levels me up, where I go, oh, you know, I uh, my didn't work out with my girlfriend. Oh, let's look at myself harshly and really critique myself from an honest point of view. Like I'm looking to help myself, right? Uh, it's not self-loathing, it's just like self-growth, right? And, and I've been able to uh, pick up insights about myself from an honest point of view. And like, you know, a question I'll often ask myself is like, you know, uh, what, like, like, what are you doing today that is like ruining your life? You know what I mean? Like, like, like what terrible habit do you have that like, you know, you know you shouldn't be doing uh, that you do? And it's, you know, everyone has those kind of, um, Everyone re uh, wants to avoid those kind of questions, but I find I actually run right at them uh, once I sort of figure them out, where, what are the questions to ask? So I feel like I'm actually advancing as I get older through that process of like brutal honesty with myself and sort of that hardcore self-responsibility that, that that football experience has has drilled into me. And just for context too, like I think when I was growing up, I was not like I am today, uh, which, is a, which is a good sign because you don't want to be uh, your, you don't want to be the same for a long period of time. You want to continue to grow, of course. But um, uh, when I was in high school and stuff, I was not uh, sort of uh, the forward leaning person that I am today. And I think football actually gave that to me. So again, um, you know, it, 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 the, the, that framework, what I've talked about, that sort of controlling outcomes, uh, the reframing, the emotional control in good or bad scenarios, and that sort of irrational. Um, confidence like that, that tool of of, of, of never-ending confidence regardless of the scenario uh, as well as that sort of honesty really allows you to just chew through anxiety it allows you to chew through adversity um, you know uh, a couple years ago uh, I had a bad back injury had to get back surgery back surgery went <laughs> unfortunately badly uh, no one's fault it's just nature of the beast sometimes those things don't work out uh, I was essentially disabled for a significant period of time couldn't walk for more than 30 minutes couldn't sit for more than 30 minutes um, and, uh, in the current context that I was in at that time, moved to a new city, didn't really know people, very isolating. Um, and I, there were definitely dark moments where I was like, man, my life is significantly changing or changed like permanently. And I thought, oh, I'm in a, in a, I'm in a hole here. Uh, but I leveraged all those insights I just sort of mentioned to you. Um, there wasn't a day where my, you know, where my brain was trying to, uh, send me down the rabbit hole of like, you know, your garbage human being, that kind of like negative self-talk. And I would literally insert the football brain into that scenario and go, you're the man, you can do this. Like nothing's gonna hold you back. It doesn't matter if you're paralyzed from the neck down, like we're gonna go get this, right? Or whatever the vision is. So uh, I can I can honestly say that that framework is something I try to implement in, in, in the kids I coach. And even within a season, if I am able to, you know, get the idea of like, you don't control outcomes, you know, you can reframe this to be positive, uh, you know, emotional control. Um, kids like, you, you can literally see them start in position A and then they end up in position B and they're like resilient, tough human beings at the end of that. And I'm really proud of that. And I think most coaches 
Uh, they don't view it through that reality. They, 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 you get those insights, but they're more like the X's and O's. Did we have a winning season? And that's important too. But man, like if you can arm a kid with some resilient tactics to move through life and move through suffering when it occurs uh, in, a, in a way that is uh, like uh, has utility, man, that's like a that's like a gift, man. So I think football does that. And if you're lucky enough to be in a healthy football program, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. Um, I, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine uh, who works in business and uh, he works uh, as a consultant in sort of like a dog eat dog kind of uh, industry uh, doing consulting for uh, sort of medium sized businesses on, you know, efficiency stuff or whatever things I don't know much about. But uh, he said that he dominates in his realm uh, because uh, he, he will actually apply that mindset that I was talking to before, the irrational confidence. So when he walks into a new business that he, he knows nothing about, he's like, I'm the best at this. I'm confident. So, of course, he doesn't overtly show that, I don't think. I don't think he walks in like saying that. Uh, but he is able to function at a high level in any environment. And I think that just even that by itself is a skill. Like, uh, you know, if you're afraid of public speaking, like that's scary. Like I'm scared of public speaking. I'm scared of doing this. I have no idea what I'm doing. But when I turned on the camera, I was like, you got this. You're the best at this. And of course that's not true as you can tell. Uh, but I think that sort of belays the point where it's like, this is scary for me to do, uh, to like put up a video, let's say, or whatever, whatever it is for you. Um, but yet I'm doing it because what's in the way is the way, right? Whatever the challenge is, as like in my football brain goes, I'm just a hundred miles an hour right at it. Cause I know on the other side of that anxiety is growth, right? Or, or, um, or satisfaction in the attempt at least, right? So I think those are some of the insights I get from football. Uh, I'll, I'll cut this video out here, but uh, if you, uh, you don't need to play football to get these insights, but I think it, uh, the real world experience of it definitely creates a resilient person. Uh, and I hope you enjoy this video and uh, chat soon.